How you doing? My name is Steve Houston. You already know that because you've probably been in this channel before. If you haven't, I want to welcome you to the channel. On this channel, we discuss final expense, mortgage detection. We talk about the IMOs, the comp plans, the good, the bad, the ugly. We provide documentation, third-party documentation, and allow you to decide what's best for you. Welcome this week. I'm back, finally, still dealing with Mom's memorial service that will be taking place in a couple of weeks. Sorry for my absence. I did put a video up a couple of days ago that kind of explained what was going on. And just want to say right up front here, what we do matters. My mom had a small final expense policy. Because of that policy, they were able to fly family in for her memorial service. And uh, she was ready to go, but we weren't ready to let her go. But uh, in any case, thank you for all the emails, text messages, uh, comments, and, uh, and support from all of you uh, uh, out there that support this channel each and every week. Look, what I want to talk about today is critical period uh, when it comes to funding uh, solution, uh, primarily mortgage section, or it could be a final expense client as well. And that critical period portion, as I always uh, talk to my, uh, to my clients, is that time after the death of a spouse or um, uh, the major breadwinner where uh, there's not enough coverage necessarily because of medical conditions or age to, uh, to pay the mortgage off. Uh, maybe they can't afford it due to budget uh, for full coverage. The next option would be partial coverage and then of course, critical period. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. What I wanna to do today is go over this critical period concept and demonstrate it as if I'm sitting right in front of my clients in the home. I think this is a very valuable part to, uh, to go over in presenting your client the three or four options uh, that they qualify for. Again, as agents, we're not trying to put ourselves in their financial shoes, right? I have too many agents that kind of overthink this process, and because they can't afford it, they think their customers can't afford it or their prospects can't afford it. Again, we don't know what their budget is, and we don't know how much they're willing to, to, uh, to dedicate towards this coverage and how bad they need it. Our job is to, is to match the client based on his age and medical conditions with the right provider, the right insurance company to give them the maximum amount of coverage that, we, that they can get based on their budget, right? I always say they should get as much as they can for, which means as much as they can afford for as long as they can because it's not going to get any cheaper. That's our job and our role. Just because you can't afford it doesn't mean they can't afford it. I've had people that's, spend you know eight or nine thousand dollars a month there's no way i could do that or would even want to do that but some people do okay so again we need to remain fairly uh neutral on that part of it and just do our jobs and present the best options that they qualify for based on their medical conditions uh their health and their age right so again when i go into the home i typically have a worksheet uh with me that has three or four options on it because that's what I tell them I'm gonna do on the phone. So I'm gonna go in there with three options here, usually uh, uh, you know, 15, 20, and 30 years, husband and wife. I'm gonna go full coverage and I'm gonna do a couple of uh, partial options, right? Okay, and these are gonna be non-med in insurance terms. It's, they're gonna be called simplified issue products. Then I'm gonna have a middle section here, which is gonna be a fully underwritten or a medical, or more simply, they're gonna to have to get the needle, right? They're gonna get stuck in the needle and get uh, have a blood exam, right? Okay, so that's uh, my center option. And then when I get down to here, I'm gonna to talk to them, to Jack and Jill, there's three ways to cover your mortgage. And I'm gonna write down here, full, partial, and then critical period what I really call equity protection, or what I emphasize in the home is equity protection. So let me get that off the board and let's go through this, all right? And I'm gonna show you exactly what I do and how the conversations I have when I'm in the home, right? My board's a little messy today, but it'll work. Okay, so I'm in the house, I'm sitting around the kitchen table, uh, I'm not in the restaurant, I'm not in the living room, I'm in the kitchen table, kneecap to kneecap with my clients. Now, Jack and Jill, there are three ways to get mortgage protection. You can do the full amount, and now, according to my sheet, you have $246,000 mortgage. Is that correct, Jill? Yes, okay, $246,000 mortgage. And there's three ways to cover your mortgage. As I said, uh, you can do a, a full coverage, and uh, many of my clients do that. Or you can go with partial coverage, which is something less than full coverage, right? Or the last thing is critical period, right? And any of these options are great, okay? So the full coverage would be, or the full amount of your mortgage, just being the 
we would get a policy that would cover that $246,000, right? And most people would do that. Others say, hey, listen, Steve, if uh, something happened to me uh, and we had a $150,000 policy, my wife could pay down the mortgage low enough to cover the payments or put that money in the bank and make the payments over the next 10 years, right? Uh, now, and the last one is, and again, this could be any amount, uh, Jack and Jill, the last one would be, would be what I call critical period, right? And that means um, that, uh, look, the reason why you want to consider critical period, I look at that more like equity protection, Jill, which means you and your husband's worked very hard over the last, you know, five or 10 years to build up the, uh, some equity in your home. And the last thing you want to do is to, is to lose the equity to, with a home going into foreclosure or short sale because you can't make next month's payment, right? So let's look at your example. Let's just say we're 10 years down the road. You've got a $200,000 mortgage, a house that's worth $300,000. I've been in business long enough to where I've seen homes that had a $200,000 mortgage be sold for $150,000, $125,000 uh, in a short sale or a foreclosure. So Jill, here's the bottom line. If Jack doesn't come home one day because of a heart attack or a car wreck, the bank's not going to come to you the next day and say, hey, we need you to pay off the $246,000 next month. What do they want? They want next month's payment, right? But let's just say no one in the family, you or the kids, nobody can make the next payment or two. That $246,000 mortgage and $300,000, $350,000 house, right, and it's appraised value, is now going to be lost to foreclosure. And I've seen homes with a $250,000 mortgage be sold for $150,000 to $200,000 in a short sale or a foreclosure. Absolutely tragic. So not only do they lose a house, they've lost all that equity, right? Just because the family can't make the payments. And what's worse, Jack and Jill, a lot of times I'll have somebody tell me, well, Steve, I, I get that. We should get it coverage. But look, our son's doing really well. We're nearing retirement. If something were to happen to us, John Jr. could take over the payments for us and make that payment uh, and give him time to sell the house. But here's the problem. We're looking down 10 years down the road, five years down the road, or even you know six or eight months down the road. And let's just say six months before you were to pass away, Jack and Jill, John Jr., your son, were to have a heart attack or a major stroke, and now he's not working. He's so broke, he can't even afford to pay attention, right? Let alone make the premium payments. And that's just the unforeseen things that we don't know. And now again, that house is uh, facing foreclosure or a short sale, and all the equity that you've worked very hard to accumulate is gone. So the critical protection plan uh, is really designed, and I like to call it more of an equity protection plan. So let me show you, Jack and Jill, what I mean by protecting the equity, okay? Okay, so I'm going to draw this out. You have to customize it to your uh, particular presentation. For the purposes of this example, we're going to go with these numbers, all right? So, Jack and Jill, let me kind of show you what that looks like. And we're going to assume, for the purposes of this demonstration, that your home value, your praise value, is $150,000, right? And again, we're going to assume that home values stay where they're, they're going to increase in value 45% over the next 10 years, right? And uh, that means at the end of 10 years, your house will be worth $222,000, right? And over the next 10 years, as, this, as your home is increasing in value, what else is happening? Well, you're making the mortgage payments, and that's going down. Let's assume that you now owe $80,000 on your mortgage instead of $150,000. So what we're trying to protect, Jack and Jill, is this difference right here, which is about $146,000, right? This is, what's, this is what's at risk in the event that your house is foreclosed on or short sailed on because no one in the family can afford to make the next couple of payments after your, uh, after your death, whether it be Jill or uh, Jack or even your kids, right? So that's what we're trying to protect is that $146,000 in, in, in equity. So what we want to do is get enough coverage today, Jack and Jill, uh, to protect that amount or more. Um, that way, Jill, you wouldn't lose the equity. You may very well, Jill, have to sell the home, but you will not lose the equity because you're going to have a policy large enough to allow you to make some payments on the home, prepare it for sale uh, while you're mourning the loss of uh, uh, Jack or Jack, you, uh, Jill, uh, whichever were to take place. Um, you can deal with that. So even though you're going to have to sell the home, potentially you have time to do that with an equity protection plan, right? And you'll be putting a for sale sign in the yard 
rather than a foreclosure sign, right? So again, let's go back now. That's kind of how I would present it to my clients in the home. Let me tell you how to draw this out because I love drawing things out in the home. I think it really creates value. It's also visual and easier to understand. Okay, that's exactly the conversation I have in the home with critical period. Starting with full, offering full, couple options for partial, and then moving to a critical period or equity protection conversation. Now, what I've also found is how do you sell this? How do you make it uh, palatable? Because again, you want them to feel comfortable. You want them to purchase something they can afford. So I'd like to break it down into daily cost. Okay, so follow along here and I'll explain how I do this in a daily cost. So Jack and Joe, how much is your mortgage? $1,000 a month, okay. So let's just say we start out with a $50,000 policy. I brought some rates with me tonight for $50,000. That means basically you can make uh, 50 mortgage payments. So almost five or six years, you can make payments on a home, and while you're still dealing with the loss of either one of you, Jill uh, missing Jack, Jack missing Jill, or the kids missing both of you, there's that going on. They're not worried about next month's payment. Remember, the bank's not coming to look for the mortgage payment, uh, for the mortgage balance. Remember, remember, the bank's not coming to look for, stop. Remember, the bank's not coming to look for the mortgage balance. They're looking for next month's payment. So if they can make 50 payments, uh, or let's just say they used even 20,000 this, of this for barrel costs, they can make 30, 30 payments uh, while getting that home ready for sale. All along, they're protecting the equity and the home is increasing in value, things that you've worked very, very hard. So let's just say that $50,000 policy is gonna run $100 a month, right? Now, I would divide that in 30 days. I'm gonna come up with a figure of about $3.33. So Jack and Jill, for $3.33, uh, a day, right, for each of you, you can protect this $146,000 worth of equity, right? Is that worth it to you? Fantastic. Fantastic. So my recommendation would be, would be let's go ahead and put a, uh, an application in uh, for you, Jill, and you, Jack, and apply for this coverage so that we don't go another day without having this coverage in place because otherwise you risk the loss of this equity and your burial costs having to be put on somebody's credit card. Fair enough. Now we're going to apply for the coverage today. I'm pretty confident I can get you approved for it, but uh, I won't know until we go through the underwriting process. So today we're going to make an application decision. So fair enough. We both agreed to go ahead and put this in place for $3.33 a day. Fantastic. All right. So that's kind of how I share that in the home, right? All right. So that's critical period, what I like to call equity protection. I think it will help you. Look, our job, as I said at the front of the video, is to have that conversation with our prospects so that they understand what's at risk, right? Uh, and there's a fear of loss and a sense of urgency to put some protection in place. It's not to decide what they can afford based on our own personal finances. What they're willing to risk is their decision, and it's an emotional one. Our job is to, again, find something that fits within their budget and put it in place and congratulate them on the great decision that they made. So hopefully that helps this week and our Wednesday Agent Training Series Critical Protection or Equity Protection plan, right? And uh, again, I think it, if you use it, it will help you uh, come up with some sort of a solution, even if it's a custom solution for your prospects, right? So again, look, this is the kind of training I think makes a difference. I'm getting ready to do another video here very shortly. I recommend you go find it on YouTube uh, on my channel. It's IMO, 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 IMO. Uh, people look, want to, they, they, I get the calls all the time from, uh, from agents that are either looking to get in the industry or they're stuck somewhere where they, they don't provide any kind of training and support. And the number one question I get is, um, what's the best IMO? And there are vast differences in IMOs, and I'm gonna discuss that for you, right? But again, it comes really down to, uh, I believe, something that's really, really undervalued in this, in this industry, which is coaching and mentoring. Not from a recruiter, not from somebody that's never put their name on a policy, never sold an application, never gone kneecap to kneecap, or hasn't done it in many, many years, uh, because things change, right? Um, but by somebody that's actually doing what they're asking you to do. This is not a do as I say business. It shouldn't be anyway. Largely in part it is with some of these network marketing type IMOs, which I totally disagree with. Uh, I get agents call me all the time. I'm in the home. I call my upline. He tells me, look, I just need help filling out the, out the application. And I, I don't even know how to fill out the application. And I ask him, he goes, well, I can't help you. I never fill out an application. What do you mean you never fill out an application? Oh, I'm a recruiter. 
That's the problem. Well, let me speak to your your uh, uh, your upline. I hate those words. Upline, downline, sideline, cross, line, underneath. I hate that stuff, right? And I don't think you like it. I mean, no one wants to be downstream or downline from anybody, right? We're all partners in this business. At least that's the way it should be. But in those network marketing type IMOs, they force everything through that uh, that uh, that hierarchy. Um, uh, pipeline, so to speak, and they don't talk to you. They don't, uh, the, I'm talking about the home office, the IMO. They provide no support, no training. You can't even call the home office and you're forced to go back to the upline who knows nothing. If that's you uh, and you're looking to uh, get out of that situation, give me a call um, or keep watching the videos. I, really, I honestly don't do this to recruit. Look, in full disclaimer, I am hiring agents. I hate the word recruiting. Again, because it's that network marketing verbiage that I can't stand, right? Um, but if you're looking at the industry, you don't know where it, what, what to decide, let's have a conversation. But if you're looking at this, at this industry, you're brand new, you don't know what to decide, it is all about the IMO. That's a, that is an important part, but it's only part one. Part two is you need to be with somebody that's a coach and a mentor that's actually doing, it's not a do as I say business, it's a do as I do business. So get with somebody that's actually going out in the field, putting the uniform on, dressing up, going out there, kneecap and kneecap in kitchens. They can help you actually strategize your case, product selection, learn the phone scripts, converting leads into, into appointments, all that stuff. Look, the IMOs, they're dealing with 10,000 agents, right? Your, your number one person that's gonna really help you succeed in this business is a coach or mentor that's actually in the field doing it themselves, right? So watch my next videos. It's going to be IMO, 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 whatever. You'll figure it out. Or I'll put it up here in the video because I think it will help you if you look at the industry. If you're stuck somewhere, that's, you're not getting that kind of support. That's why I'm doing this. That's why this channel exists. Do I hire agents? Absolutely. Am I building an agency? Absolutely. Um, but again, you can stay here, watch these videos, be part of the community, ask questions, put, post comments, what, email me, text me, call me and I'll be more than willing to help you regardless of whether or not we work together. But what makes us different is very quickly, exclusive, high quality leads, no redating, no restocking, no repurposing of leads to agents. And in order to do that and guarantee that process works correctly, you have to have world-class technology that will remove the lead from the system when another agent sells a product to that particular client. If you don't have the technology to back that up, right? you need a, you need a robust, technology platform, not just a lead dis, uh, disbursement platform in order to do that, right? Uh, you also need to have, and that's very important because it comes down to your cash flow and surviving in the early stages of the business. You also need to have industry leading compensation, right? Meaning you can come in at 70%, go up to 110%, right? And not have it be tied to recruiting, okay? You gotta watch the IMO video, okay? If you can't get promoted past a certain level, unless you're recruiting, it is by definition a network marketing IMO and you should run away as fast as you can. Not that I'm against building an agency. I've already told you I'm doing that myself. I'm against you not getting paid what you're worth on your own personal production because you haven't recruited or because those agents that you recruited are currently doing nothing, right? You wanna get paid what you're worth based on the value you bring to the IMO, which is your personal production, not on this, this team sitting out of here that may or may not be doing anything, right? So you wanna have agency hands-on support, that coaching and mentoring on every case, before, during, and after the sale. Learn how to do the phone script, learn how to convert leads into, into appointments, watch the next video, I don't wanna get into that. Time-tested and proven in-home presentation that you can learn, time-tested and proven, not something they say, hey, go watch this, I don't know anything about it because I, I, don't, I don't produce, but go watch it anyway, right? You need to be learning something. You don't have time to waste. You want to succeed here, I'm, I'm assuming. That's why you came here. Home office training and support, right? You got to have that, right? Continued training by top agents that are willing to share with you success stories whether or not they're part of your, your team or not, right? Uh, the ones that are at the top of the game, you can learn from and you want to be able to do that. Generous bonus program for producers and managers. A vast amount of products and insurance carriers to represent. Top annuity and final expense products. These are the things that you need to have at your IMO. Plug and play technology to grow your successful, sustainable business, right? And no charge for technology. 
no charge for membership clubs in order to be able to qualify for a promotion. It's ludicrous that you had to be part of a membership club at 100 bucks a month just to be promoted based on your production that you've already earned, right? World-class incentive trips. We all love incentive trips where you can leave your wallet at home, take your girlfriend, your spouse, and go on a nice trip because you earned it, right? The absolute best home office support staff uh, to provide assistance with new business, leads, sales support, all that stuff. Licensing, underwriting, and marketing tools, right? All the tools an agent needs to start and grow a lasting business, right? That's what you should be looking for. We can have that conversation if you want. But again, don't leave out part two, which is who you'll be interacting with on a daily basis, right? Okay, so uh, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button below, hit the like button, mash the bell, because you're gonna get instant notifications for live stream videos. Uh, and when I put up a video, you'll get an email uh, that's, that's been up there so you don't miss anything. Hopefully this has been valuable to you today. Uh, but do me a favor, there are other agents out there that are, that are struggling. Maybe you know some of them. Share the video out. I would be grateful for the share. Remember, Wednesday is our agent training series, and Sunday, I just rambled about something that I've been asked a lot about during the course of the week, right? Remember this as I close the video out. I love this statement, and it's something I repeat all the time. The surest way to succeed is to be determined not to fail. It's your I quit factor. Bye-bye. I had to go clean my messy board now. Bye.